Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So you should remember this guy, New Jersey resident Gregory Yetman. He was an Army National Guardsman when he took part in the Capitol attack. Yetman later admitted to investigators that he heard flashbang grenades. He saw tear gas being deployed into the crowd when he got to the Capitol. He also confirmed seeing people breaking windows. He saw an officer being pulled into the mob. Um, initially, he just stood back. He observed the violence. He did nothing to stop it, though. But then after a police line was breached, Yetman ended up taking part in this attack on officers. He took part specifically in an attack on officers who were outnumbered and completely surrounded. So just despicable. This group was backed up, this group of officers was backed up against a wall. And then the mob was surrounding them on all three other sides. So the officers were being rammed with things, with bodies. They were being struck. One member of the mob threw a fire extinguisher at them. And Yetman decided, oh, I'm going to take this opportunity to attack them from behind. So he walked up onto a raised area behind these officers. He picked up one of their own discarded or, or, you know, left behind pepper spray canisters, which is much larger than, you know, just the average bottle of pepper spray that we could buy. And he shot it at the officers. He shot these officers with chemicals for about 14 seconds straight. That may not seem like a lot, but try doing something, anything for 14 seconds, you'll realize how long it is. And because of Yetman's attack, the officers were forced to retreat. And so that allowed the mob to advance further onto the Capitol grounds. So from there, Yetman headed over to the Lower West Terrace Tunnel. Um, and there's no evidence that he did anything at, in that area, but he posted on Facebook that day and in the days that followed, and he blamed the violence on Antifa. So I guess he's Antifa then. I guess that's what he's saying. In one post, Yetman wrote, quote, what happened at the Capitol was unfortunate and uh, unacceptable. I was there. I witnessed it. I can attest to Antifa members infiltrating our protest and meshing in with the Trump supporters. They riled up Trump supporters and got the violence going. So I guess he's also admitting that he and all of the other Trump supporters who were there are just sheep, right? You just follow the leader, right, Yetman? Is that what you're saying? I mean, all it takes is one well-placed Antif, quote unquote, Antifa member to get you guys going. Uh, it's so sad. Um, anyway, in yet another post, Yetman blamed the police for the violence. He said, quote, I was there. We were gathering and they started lobbing OC at us. People got p posed, supposed to be pissed, and rightfully so. It was sad to see what our country has come to, but being peaceful and the quote unquote nice guys got us nowhere. <laughs> this won't go away. The people have been wronged and we want justice and fairness. Nobody went there to hurt law enforcement, but they sure as fuck hurt many people in return. They were relentless, and I don't think I'll be backing the blue after this. They are modern brown shirts. Yeah, they're the brown shirts, not you, right? And I love how he says, you know, oh, we were nice guys before this. Really? Were you? Were you? Let's talk about the Trump train down in Texas. Let's talk about all of the violent threats. Let's talk about the guy who sent pipe bombs, the Trump supporter, with his entire van covered in Trump paraphernalia, who sent pipe bombs to Obama and the Clintons and all these Democrats. Give me a freaking break. These people are so delusional about their own side. So anyway, 
Yetman told a very different story when the FBI interviewed him. So they interviewed him in January, just later that month after the Capitol attack. And Yetman claimed that he fully supports law enforcement. And he said that anyone who entered the building was a piece of shit, his words, and anyone who assaulted officers should be prosecuted. <laughs> I agree. Uh, but on November 8th of 2023, Yetman then had another change of heart. Yetman saw FBI agents approaching his home. They were getting ready to arrest him. And he fled into the woods behind his property. So you guys might remember that. I did an update on him a while back. So the agents went in. They conducted a search of his house. They found multiple guns. Some of them were loaded. There was a ton of ammunition. Um, a manhunt ensued. Two days later, Yetman turned himself in to the local police. So Yetman was officially arrested on November 10th of 2023, and he was charged with assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon, civil disorder, entering restricted grounds with a dangerous weapon, disorderly conduct on restricted grounds with a dangerous weapon, and two counts of physical violence, one of which also included that dangerous weapon enhancement. Yetman's family decided they're going to go set up a fundraiser. So they set up this Give, Send, Go fundraising page for him. And they claimed that Yetman was, quote, with the peaceful protesters on January 6th at the Capitol. And then they tried to justify Yetman being a fugitive when he took off. They, they said that he feared, quote, being falsely imprisoned like many other January 6th protesters. <laughs> yeah, falsely imprisoned for shooting officers with pepper spray as they were backed into a corner. Okay. Um, so as of July of this year, they had raised over $42,000 with that bullshit story. Before that, though, in April of 2024, Yetman pleaded guilty. So he pleaded guilty to the assault charge minus the dangerous weapon enhancement. So he was looking at up to eight years in prison, three years of probation, and 250000 in fines. But the prosecutor requested only 45 months in prison, uh, three years of probation, and 2000 in restitution. I can't understand why they didn't request a fine and, and tried to seize this cash that he raised from his crimes. And Yetman didn't even tell the probation department about that money. So you have to, when you are working with the probation department during your case and everything, you have to fill out paperwork, as I understand it, and tell them everything. You have to tell them all about your assets, anything that you have. He left that off. So they absolutely should have taken it. Anyway, Yetman's attorney argued for leniency because they said essentially his client has suffered enough. And he pointed to the fact that Yetman has already been in jail for eight months now and how Yetman, quote, now has a felony conviction in his record, which will legally deprive him of the right to possess firearms and to vote. Aw, womp womp and thoughts and prayers. I guess you should have thought of that first, huh? Um, so U.S. District Judge James Bosberg presided over Yetman's case. He is typically very tough. He usually gives prosecutors everything they asked for. So I was pretty surprised by this. For some reason, he sentenced Yetman to only two and a half years in prison, 18 months of probation, and 2,000 in restitution. So yes, he does have a felony on his record. Yes, he won't be voting for the apricot antichrist anytime soon. But he attacked officers who were in a completely vulnerable position. And this is while he was serving as a military police officer. Not just in the military, as a military police officer. That is disgusting. That is reprehensible. So, no, it's not anywhere near enough time behind bars. No. I don't know what went on with this, with Bozberg. Honestly, I'm blown away because that's just not him. So anyway, I will let you know if I hear any more. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like this video, share it, become a subscriber if you have not, become a donor if you possibly can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.